to shield. Okay. Um, well, we are creating this video just to kind of introduce the other faces involved with the Living Water School. Uh, many people on social media and around since we went online only would see my face because it's really hard. You know, when we were in the building, I would walk around with my camera and show what everyone was doing. I kind of miss those days. I'm hoping we'll be able to do a little more of that next year when we go more into the building. But I do think it's important that the world knows that the Living Water School is more than me. Um, the idea to do this video came not too long ago when someone said, do I teach all of the students at all of the classes? And I said, oh my goodness, there is, I don't want that message to be out there that, that the Living Water School is me by myself. I could not do the Living Water School. There would be no Living Water School without, the, without our dedicated staff. And so I thought it'd be a good time just to quickly, we each introduce ourselves. I'll go last, uh, even though people know who I am, I, I'll go last. But I would love for you all to introduce yourselves, um, talk a little bit about what brought you to Living Water School, um, what you teach, your thoughts on your time being here. And um, we'll start with Claudina. Hi, my name is Claudina Baker, and I am a teacher at the Living Water School. I teach the Little Springs dance and art, and I have been teaching for the Little Living Water School for a very long time. <laughs> enjoy teaching at the Living Water School. I enjoy the students, their energy. They are just such a blessing to work with. And over the years, they have just committed to everything. And also, they are amazing when it comes to introducing um, things that they want to learn each and every day. Mm -hmm. And we enjoy creating curriculums around their interests as well. So yeah. the Living Water School is just an amazing school with amazing students. And I just am so happy to be at the Living Water School and all that I am bringing and all that we are going to be. Yeah. And we love having you. Miss Claudina teaches dance and art. And she also, she mentioned the Little Springs. The Little Springs is our youngest group. They are kindergarten through second-ish. Sometimes even in second grade, they're not quite ready to go hang out with the big people. So we let them stay for one more year. Um, and Little Springs, um, just, just to give a little background for those who are watching, um, the school is set up into learning groups based on the classical trivium. So the grammar or the early grammar group are the little springs. That's the kindergarten through second slash third, early third grade. Then we have the creeks are third through sixth grade, which is the uh, regular grammar phase. Then we have the seventh through ninth, which is our logic group. And then we have 10th through 12th, which is our rhetoric group. And we just kind of put them in that, um, in those groupings so we can just keep track of their learning process and their development. And I love all the classes. My daughter is in Little Springs. She'll be graduating from the Little Springs this year, moving on, as we say, flowing on into the creeks. Um, and she's always talking about what she's learning in your class called Around the World with Miss Claudina where she teaches the students all about different cultures, different countries, different places. She teaches them about the, all different parts of the United States, um, as well as other countries. And she just does a phenomenal job. And she teaches Bible, where she incorporates a lot of drama and creativity. So we just love having you, Miss Claudina. Your, your creativity is boundless. <laughs> and I'm um, so happy to be here. Yeah, and you have two kids in the school as well, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. and they love it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I love working with them. Um, Joy, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, my name is Joy Lockley, and I'm one of the newer teachers at um, the Living Water School. Um, but to introduce myself, I'm a mom of two young Black men, two young Black grandsons, and um, a former Sunday school teacher as well. Um, I, home my young, my, I homeschooled my youngest son until he reached third grade, because I recognized that um, after he went to preschool, that public school was just not going to be a really good fit for him. Mm -hmm. And so um, as his mother, who knew him best, who better to teach him? You yeah. Know? yeah. And so um, 
in preschool, you know, he would rather run around on all fours pretending to be the fastest animal on the planet, you know, the cheetah, <laughs> rather than sit in a circle, Indian, you know, sitting on the floor, Indian style in a circle, you right. know, at the age of four, you know, yeah. so that was a real challenge for him. So when I first met Anika and learned about her school, um, I thought, wow, you know, the free, relaxed style of learning, you know, that would have been, I love the concept. And I thought that would have been the perfect school for my son 20 years ago. So um, I don't know, I just thought it was amazing, you know, the environment there, it um, really, um, my son would have just flourished if, had he been, you know, um, um, a student at the Living Water School. And um, some of the things that, you know, really, you know, um, I like about it is that the children, are, you know, the learning environment just really fosters their curiosity, you know, it encourages um, their creativity. Um, and then fast forward a little bit um, to 2020, God opened a door and I was able to um, begin to work with the Little Springs. And I've done so for the last couple of years. And um, they're not so little anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so it makes me a little sad um, that, you know, I'm leaving, but um, after just two years, but um, we had some great times um, learning about, um, you know, just watching their little minds absorb, you know, the little leaders in Black history. Um, we've done some um, Greek history this year, learning about the Greek gods, and that was very interesting. Um, every Friday, we would go on these wonderful hikes out in nature and have a great time. And I just can't wait to see, you know, where, you know, as these kids grow up, I just can't wait to see, you know, what they do and where they go and who they become in life. And we have just loved having you, Joy. I mean, even the, the unique way you teach reading, and now everyone in Little Springs is a very strong reader. Um, and that's both of you guys together, but there are some really... Um, these phonics things you do, that the way you would tutor some privately who were having a hard time catching on, that's something that, and you, and because of your commitment to that, everyone in Little Springs is a reader and a writer. And that's, that's really important for them to have before they move on to the next thing. Um, so Joy, you've been a blessing and um, we just have enjoyed having you with us. You and Claudina were like the dynamic duo with those little springs. I mean, and the parents are raving on how sharp they are in everything. They really have progressed so much, you all. And, and the way you did it online, you're not even, Claudina, you're in Florida, you know, but you made the, the screen come alive for these young people. And I could hear them as a mom, just so engaged and enjoying that learning and I'm seeing them develop so much. So I definitely just, I value you all so much. Um, all right, but Cass, I'm gonna have you go next. Uh, thank you for joining us. Just what you're doing is you're just um, introducing yourself. If you wanna give a little background of what brought you here and your role, the role you have played at the Living Water School. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. I am Cassetta Pringle. Um, everyone calls me Miss Cassie. And um, my background is I started off as a homeschool mom. And my son was enrolled in the, the homeschool co op group at the Living Water School. Um, <clears throat> and then he chose to be enrolled in the actual um, school itself. He declared that he was not going anywhere else. And <laughs> so we were just going to have to make do. And so here we are four, five years later. And um, it has been quite an experience. Um, I, we have met just some wonderful families, um, lovely educators. And um, I have seen my son grow socially. I have seen him grow um, in some, some of the areas <clears throat> that he was struggling in academically, and we are still um, moving forward. And um, my role at the school is an enrollment specialist or enrollment assistant, excuse me, sorry, enrollment assistant. And so I help with all of the online enrollments. And then I also um, do the Pathways program, which is our graduation prep program for our bays, um, which are our high school students. And um, being here and participating with them in their preparation to leave the school and begin their lives outside of the Living Water School has just been um, an amazing gift from God to mm -hmm. see these 
students um, grow and flourish and choose their own paths in life and fall down and make mistakes and get back up and um, really um, recognize their autonomy over their life. Mm -hmm. And that's just been um, truly a joy. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love and I love that pathways program. I love your vision for that and how patient you are with each of them as they try to sort through that, <laughs> work through that. And um, and you have been a blessing. And I can't believe it's been almost five years that you've been at the school, but it's been it's gone so fast. But it's been just a blessing. You also from time to time will teach a cooking class as well if students sign up. <laughs> And the, and <laughs> if they sign up, you know, the Living Water School, the, the different teachers sometimes will offer a class. You don't have to take it and students can sign up for it. And um, she has taught and these the students learn these different tricks of the trade in the in the kitchen. Um, and with, so with the, with the cooking class, it's um, it's great because they don't recognize that they're learning math skills. Mm -hmm. They're learning um, world history. Yeah, they're learning. Um, cultural diversity there's so many things that I, I just kind of add into that yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that and um and that's done online all of these things that we're talking about are done online all right um Mr. Tony why don't we hear from you next my name is Anthony Wilson um I'm a retired scientist for the Department of Defense after 42 years mm -hmm. with the Department of Defense um, I'm the maths math teacher at the Living Water School. I teach uh, seventh grade math, eighth grade math, algebra one, algebra two, and geometry. Um, I was introduced to the school from the beginning. Um, I helped out with another school that kind of flowed out um, that that the, live, the Living Water School flowed out of. Um, I just helped with the technical things and also taught gym for a little while. And so I was very familiar with the school when it, you know, upon the creation. Um, and um, I've been teaching for, teaching at the school for two years. And um, I, I'm a natural teacher I have so many ment mentees and protégés around the country and around town. Um, so teaching is a natural bent for me. Um, I love to see young people get it. Um, with math, that's a, um, either you like it or you don't. But I believe that the kids, a lot of the youth, don't like math because they're not very good at it. But if I can just get them to understand it, I believe that they come around. Mm -hmm. and some of them who didn't think they like math do pretty good in it. And so yes. it's not it's not an enemy anymore. It's something yes. that they just use as a tool. Yes. Which I've been using math all my life. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's that is why we love you. And that's why those parents at last night's final parent meeting sang your praises so much because you are, you are bringing students to love math. And, and you're, you're very important because we do get a lot of students who are older who come to the Living Water School. Um, and if they have not been given that love for math while they're young, it does create a, a, a scar in them growing up that makes it hard for them to do upper level math. So it's almost like, your role is reintroducing them to the world of math in a way they've never experienced before, where it is not something to be afraid of. Um, if they get Mr. Shield, if they come young enough to have Mr. Shield, who we're going to hear from in a minute, then they, they learn that to not be afraid of math earlier. And so mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. But you have a real challenge because you're dealing with the students who either, um, and you may even notice a difference. Those who grew up in the school may have a different attitude towards math than those who came to the school in sixth, seventh and up. Um, and there is a fear. And honestly, I'm just gonna be honest, we're predominantly African-American school. A fear of math is a common plague in the black community. Um, we are told even by our own people that math is not something we're good at. And this is a message that is often sometimes subliminally 
given to them when they're young in local schools. And it is really up to us as a people to teach them that math is for us and that we can do it. And we have the same ability as any other people group to do math. And so Tony breaks that uh, barrier and he does a good job at breaking that barrier. And we see students go from fearing math to feeling less afraid of math and eventually just kind of flowing on through math. Um, so your, your contributions to the school have been invaluable and you are irreplaceable. Although I know God is able if that, that need ever came and I'm gonna leave it at that. He's always <laughs> threatening to retire and I know he's going to at some point. <laughs> I'm just praying that God, you know, intervenes. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> the Lord is in control. <laughs> exactly. But we thank you for whatever time. We thank you. Your time with us was only supposed to be a two-week sub position, and it turned into two years. So I can't complain. <laughs> I am very grateful to have you. Um, Mr. Shield. Uh, oh, no. Uh oh, Mr. Shield. Okay, go ahead. All right. Yes, my, yes, my name is Denise the Shield, and I've been with the Living Water School since the very beginning. And what I enjoy a lot about the school is that it's an environment that is good for uh, students having a lot of freedom to learn. And it's a loving Christian environment. So it's, it's kind of the perfect match. I teach elementary math and high school science. And I love finding new and different ways to help the students to learn. And it's always exciting to see them discover new things about themselves and about the subject that they're studying. And, and in line with what's uh, something that uh, Tony said, it was exciting to see. Now, I always would say uh, math is like a puzzle. It's just like a puzzle. And it was very funny today that somebody realized when we were working on word problems, oh, this is like a puzzle. So mm -hmm. they, they, were, they were kind of making the connection and it was like, yeah, I've been saying that for you know over and over again. But uh, I've been teaching for over 30 years now in church situation, public school, private, Christian schools. And by far, the Living Water School is the best environment for learning and for teaching. So I just love the, uh, uh, love the school and appreciate so much the opportunity that I was given uh, to join the team. Yeah. you. All, I don't know if you mentioned this before, but you also teach the high school uh, sciences that, that are not math based, uh, right. physical science and biology, I think. Biology. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then health, when we rotate health in, you teach that class as well. And, um, and so she just does such a great job of connecting to both the younger students in her math classes and the older students in those sciences. And so this is our team. Um, and then many of you all know me, I'm Dr. Nika Prather, and I'm the founder of the school. We don't have hierarchy in the school, so I don't ever consider myself typically as the head of school. Um, everything is done collaboratively. Um, the teachers connect together for final decisions. Um, last night we had our final community meeting where all teachers and parents and some students got together. We planned the new calendar. We made all the final decisions. Um, I just kind of invite everyone to the table for that collaboration. And um, but we're all considered staff. We're all equal, all equal participants in this work. And um, the main class that I teach is I teach um, all the humanities courses. So I teach English, language arts. Um, I teach introduction to Latin. Um, and you all are gonna hear from the advanced Latin teacher in another video. Um, and I also teach, um, I rotate in every now and then logic and um, one of the, and government as well. And so those are my classes that I teach. Um, and I love it. I love opening the students' mind to the world of classical literature. And I love op introducing them to Latin, which allows them to see words around them because of how a lot of English words are connected to Latin roots. And, um, and so this whole journey with this team of teachers 
has been an incredible journey of basically tearing down strongholds in our young people's lives when it comes to education. Uh, repairing ruins, as Dorothy Sayers often says, we are here to repair the ruins that oftentimes a poor educational experience gives students. And we are building them up to fulfill their purpose, to give them the tools necessary to be lifelong learners. But then we're also giving them a great, great deal of freedom to figure out who they are, who God has called them to be, and to be able to walk in that purpose. And um, we also are here after they leave us forever. Like we tell them when they leave us, we are always here. So they come back, they get advice, they get recommendation letters, they show up to events, they always know that we are here to support their life journey for as long as they need us, even after they graduate from us. And I think about the name of the school, the Living Water School. It is a name taken from the scriptures where the Lord says he wants to be a spring of life that wells up in people, right? And we want that for our children. We want that for our students. And then we want them to go out into the world to be a spring of life to the world. So we thank you so much for taking this time to get to know us. We'll be having some other videos that we will be watching of some of the other teachers um, that have contributed to this work. Thank you all so much for joining us. Well, I'm excited to have our STEM coordinator, um, Melody Colebrook-Jones, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about her role at the Living Water School. Hello, everyone. And I just First, thank Dr. Prather for this um, opportunity and blessing to be a part of the Living Water School. Uh, as she said, I am Melody Colebrook Jones and currently serving as the STEM coordinator. I have the privilege to work with the students um, during STEM enrichment activities where we try to embark and engage and explore uh, different concepts related to STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We, we have learned to code, we build robots, we are programming online, we are learning to build websites. Um, we have even learned to code using color and music. Mm. And um, we have even had the opportunity, although virtual, to work on hands-on activities where we have built gliders um, and, and had the opportunity to... Um, kind of build our own brand where students make their own logos and use all of that information to kind of come together and have a better idea of the opportunities that are available in STEM. One of the reasons uh, I came to Living Water School was uh, really initially to learn, to learn more about the culture, about what it's like to have that democratic educational freedom. And I saw an opportunity not only for me to give back, but for me to learn a little more as an educator. And um, I just, I think I find myself constantly working with children in STEM, not only because of my science background, but I recognize the importance of children seeing someone who looks like themselves um, in those fields and serving in those roles. And I think that that's extremely important. Yes, and you've been such a blessing and such a servant um, to the school and you have been invaluable. And and I don't know if you realize how important you have been to us. And what we, I love about the STEM class is the students choose to take it. It's not required. And she always has a nice little bunch of STEM, STEMers, I call them, yeah. <laughs> signed up to take her class and to do her activities. And you can hear them in the morning opening. Is there STEM today? Is there STEM today? And I love that. I love, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying in the earlier video about with, and I think Melody and I have the same passion about this, how our people, Black people, are, are often subliminally taught that science and math is not for them, that they're not supposed to be good at it, not supposed to be exposed to it or to master it. You often hear uh, all types of teachers, black, white, saying to another black student, oh, that's okay. You don't have to do that many math problems or you don't have to take that science class. I'm seeing now the county that we used to be located in. We are no longer there. We're now in Alexandria, Virginia, but PG County has lowered its math and science requirement where they used to <clears throat> require certain advanced math and sciences for graduation. They don't require that anymore. 
But we don't want to do that. We want our kids to have exposure to all of this. So many of you all know me as a pa being passionate about classical learning, just like classics are typically withheld from black communities, so is science and math. And if you, if you see the pattern here, there's this pattern of the best of the best of whatever we have to offer with regards to education, oftentimes is not seen being given to black communities as if we're not smart enough or good enough to also be able to partake of that. But we try to give that the Living Water School. So we're grateful for uh, Melody coming and saying, I agree with that. And I'm going to make every sacrifice to make sure our community has exposure to these things. And so we are so thankful to you. And as a result, like we see students, Melody, as you know, desiring, they change, like when they get ready to graduate, they change from, change their major to some type of STEM related major. So you're definitely inspiring our young people and I'm so grateful to you. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. And I'm glad to be here. And if nothing else, of course, as a fellow bison, I had to show up and show out. <laughs> Ain't you in the place? Ain't you, you, <laughs> you know. know. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely, well, thank you so much, girl. You're welcome, my uh, pleasure and my blessing. All right, thank you. Well, here we are with uh, one of our dear beloved teachers. I'm gonna allow her to introduce herself to you. I'm just so grateful for all of the many people that have joined in this work at the Living Water School. Each of these teachers has brought a special gift uh, to the school. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a little bit. Go ahead, girl. Hi, my name is Renita Buford, and I am have the honor of being the PE teacher and the music teacher. And you know, it's been I've been the PE and the music teacher since the school started. And so I have had the honor of going on this journey with the school, and not only with the school, but with the children and, and getting to know them and they getting to know me and getting to know their feel for the arts. You know, mm -hmm. the art is such an expression, right? And I love them having the freedom of the expression of the arts, but also learning our language of the arts too. Yeah. Yes. Um, and not only that, I've, I've gone on this journey with them as far as PE, like learning how to, that, how, why is it important to exercise? Why is it important to take care of our bodies? And why is it important to have that self-care? Yes. Because what we're teaching them now is going to take them into their adulthood. And not only to their adulthood, it's going to help them to be able to establish a family of their own one day. And yes. so that's what I really love about the Living Water Schools. We're helping them establish their future self right yes and it's yes. giving me that opportunity to do that in a way that is not traditional yes you know? and by it not being traditional that means our kids get to learn our language firsthand yes and so I love that non-traditional um, type of teaching that we can teach for our kids what they learn and hear from us yes not only hear from us but hear from our ancestors right yes so yes and down these 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 this knowledge and this yeah. wisdom and teaching them and I just love being on that that non-traditional path yeah because I've seen our kids excel in a different way yeah. versus being in the public school how they excel in a different way yeah so I just think Anika and I'm just glad to be here yes and I I think one of the things I love, the gift that Renita has given to us, not just that taking care of that self-care, that exercise, which is something that's very important to her, um, but especially because of her work in, her, in the health health care field. I mean, that's probably why it's so important to you. But you have brought music into the school, and, and which is odd because we're an online school, but the kids are singing. Yes, you can hear them singing. When we go hiking, they're singing. When we're camping, we're, they're singing. And then my children here at home are always singing. I'm like, well, where did you learn that song? Miss Renita. And they're just singing. Everything is about a song. And so, you know, a lot of times schools, the music teacher is just preparing them for a performance. Mm -hmm. But Renita is teaching music in a way where music becomes a part of their life. And we are a Christian school, but Renita teaches them about all types of music. So can you, can I tell you how much I loved hearing my daughter sing, don't worry, 
bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's learning about Bob Marley at the same time she's learning about Fred Hammond or, you know, or the great hymns. She's yeah. learning about all music. She's learning about the music of Black people. Mm -hmm. She's learning about her heritage. They're learning about their culture as well as music from other cultures. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and you just weave that in so beautifully. Um, and so when we were in the building, she was teaching piano and recorder. And now we're trying to figure out how to get back to that <laughs> at some point. But um, we'll see how we're going to bring that online at some point. But Renita has music in her soul and she's planning it in the soul of our students. And I just love that so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Renita, for the time you've given to us. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Diana Smith. I've been a school teacher and administrator for 35 years, uh, and I'm very glad to be teaching um, advanced Latin at the Living Water School. I um, met Anika a few years ago, and as is the case for all of us, uh, recognized the wonderful spirit uh, and commitment, and I joined on. So I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed working with these young people and bringing them this ancient language, uh, which I love. Uh, it's wonderful to see a school that is committed uh, to a belief and also to an intellectual tradition. So I'm glad to have been part of this. <laughs>